welcome everybody. Um, welcome particularly to the new members of the European Society Executive Board. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I just said uh, in, in sort of the preamble as we got going that um, hopefully the aim of today is to have a bit of a discussion. Um, so to start with, I'm going to just run through a heads up of some of the things that are coming up for Europanet over the next few weeks and months. Um, because I think one of the difficulties with Europanet is it's always quite difficult just to kind of keep track of everything that's going on. So can you see my screen? Is that sharing? Yes, yes. yes. working fine. Okay. okay, superb. Great. So starting off, so we have regular webinars they kind of got a little bit patchy last year because there were so many things going on but we are now back to a regular program of one monthly calls they're usually on a tuesday towards the middle of the end of the month um so we have a call today about meeting the board um next month it's going to be um a slightly different thing it's going to be focused on science so our guest is going to be dr ashley king of the natural history museum and he's going to be talking about bennu um and sample return mission and what asteroids can tell us about the origins of the solar system and then the one after that on the 19th of march is again going to be um a bit of a different kind of webinar so it's going to be a career special mainly aimed at early careers and we are going to invite back some of the past chairs of epec um, so I think, uh, Callum, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, I think we, we have Lena Nowak, who was the original chair of EPEC. We also have, um, Erica Lutzi and Ines Belgesem, who were the previous chairs. Um, is Indy joining us as well? I, I don't know. Anyway, we have, we have a, an opportunity to find out where, where people have gone on from being involved in EPEC and where they are now, but we're also going to be joined by three recruitment agents, agents who will talk about their knowledge um, of careers in the, the space industry, what kind of opportunities there are out there, um, and hopefully be able to give some really valuable advice to early careers. Um, I just mentioned that we have weekly get togethers on Discord. If you are not already on Discord, I've got the link at the end, um, but we launched this back in, uh, back in September and the community is really growing there it's a great way of staying in touch um seeing the kind of things that are going on getting involved in discussions um but as well as chat channels there are also voice channels that you can use to interact with other members um and every friday at 12 30 we have sort of friday lunchtime get togethers um on the io voice channel and these are an opportunity just to have a bit of chat to get to know each other and we usually have some kind of focus on a different topic so we've had for instance um stefan Achar has talked about vespa last week we had just a trial of otter and um, some of the ai tools for taking notes so um we've had ones about epec um we've had ones about um the, the central europe hub and events that they're planning so lots of different things but um again it's a great way to get involved in the europe community. EPSC is obviously our big annual event. Um, the next one, EPSC 2024, is going to be in Berlin from the 8th, 13th of September. The call for sessions is now open, so please do look and propose sessions. The deadline is the 6th of March. Um, the call for abstracts will open on the 21st of March and close on the 15th of May, and registration will start just before then. The letter of schedule will go out in early June. The early bird reg registration, important time for getting the get best rates for EPSC, where will close on the 31st of July. Um, and you can find about all about EPSC on the EPSC 2024 website. Uh, we have a we have a local organizing committee meeting in Berlin tomorrow. So again, there should be more news um, and activities going on there. Um, but we hope to see as many of you as possible there um, in September. And also just also keep an eye out if you are interested in hosting EPSC, uh, the call for the hosting the 2026 and 2027 EPSC should go out fairly soon, um, probably by the end of end of January. So keep an eye out for that. We're looking for venues that can host 1200 people, um, an exhibition with a really active um, 
and, and passionate uh, local organising committee. So um, keep an eye out for that. The planetary mapping winter school is on at the moment. It's got over 600 participants. Um, it's been growing steadily every year, thanks to the brilliant work put in by Angela Pia Rossi, um, Giacomo, uh, Carlos Brandt, um, all his team at um, Construct University. Um, and people join from all over the world. It's a mix of live and asynchronous presentations. Um, the presentations, even if you're not registered, the presentations are now being uploaded onto that site. The videos aren't there at the moment, but they will be there in due course. But all the materials from past winter schools are there. Uh, you may have to log in just to just to get access, but it's an amazing resource and an amazingly successful venture. There are various other um, events that have been funded by or partly funded by Europlanet uh, coming up over the next few months um, in response to proposals put in by the regional hubs. So the Southeast Europe hub um, has requested funding for the Terrestrial Analogues for Solar System Studies workshop, which is taking place on the island of Milos in Greece uh, from the 3rd to the 6th of June. Um, and this is a combination of lecture, lectures, science discussions, but really focused on going out into the field because Milos is this wonderful place uh, of great interest for planetary geology. Um, the British Planetary Science Congress from the 19th to the 21st of June um, is going to be held in the space park in Leicester and the National Space Centre next door. And again, Europlanet has awarded funding through the Ireland UK hub for early career events. And there's going to be a one day workshop for people new to the planetary science community um, looking at space instrumentation and how space missions are developed. And then there's a three day conference um, with oral and post sessions on all kinds of planetary topics. The French Planetary Science Congress, which is going to be from the 1st to the 5th of July, uh, co-hosted with the French Astrobiology Society and the National Programme for Planetary Science. Um, again, Europlanet's uh, co-hosting and supporting a one-day workshop devoted to early career researchers with talks from industry and academia about career paths and practical training on CVs and writing grants. Um, and then a poster session for early careers. Oops, excuse me. Um, the Czech Variable Star Conference in November, the 56th iteration of this, which is becoming increasingly an international um, event, again, is that international support is provided to some extent by Europlanet, um, who's providing um, advertising, bursaries for travel, international travel and translation of presentations and materials. So that program now has a Czech and Slovak section and then there's an international um, section, there's student competitions, there's pro-am sessions. So it's a very um, broad and increasingly um, uh, inclusive event. And then I also just wanted to say, many of you came to the Europlanet Research Infrastructure Meeting back in June last year. You were all involved in some of the discussions we had about road mapping. Um, we had some meetings, follow-up meetings in the autumn to talk about those. Um, and then it's probably gone a bit quiet since then. So I just wanted to let you know that things are still going. Um, activities very much are ongoing. We've, uh, we're in the process of setting up a sustainability working group who will take all those ideas and start to put those into an operational plan. We have some roadmaps which are due as deliverables within the Europlanet Research Infrastructure Project. So we've got to put those together um, by the end of February. So then at that point, we'll have things that you'll be able to look at um, and comment on regarding what kind of um, uh, what kind of operational models we're looking at, what sources of income, um, what kind of expenditures, what kind of recommendations we're putting together. Um, and already one of the focuses for these things is going to be EPSC and bringing in more um, industry involvement, more exhibitions to EPSC. Um, and we've been actively going out and promoting that over the over the last few months. Um, we've got some funding applications as well to support the community that are either in or being considered at the moment, followed up at the moment. A doctoral network was submitted um, to fund 15 PhDs uh, that went in at the end of November and we're hoping for the results in May. So if that comes off, then that would be a really great way to support early careers um, and to, to build a solid structure for the future um, and resources that come out of that. And then we're also working with other research infrastructures to participate in some upcoming bids that are due on the 12th of March 
um, to do with consolidating the research infrastructure landscape um, and strengthening bilateral co cooperation um, with partners in Africa. Um, and also working to make sure that the Commission really understands what distributed research infrastructures are, what Europlanet has been able to contribute to the, the community in terms of supporting research projects over the past few years, so that, that message is really loud and clear. So join the discussions, um, look at the events calendar, join the membership website or have a look on the membership website, there's details of the upcoming webinars, join us on Discord, and if you have news and views or things that you want to contribute, then there's also the newsletter. Um, so don't forget to update us on that. Right, I've talked by far enough now. So let's get on with meeting our new board members. So I think we will start with anne Karine. You are not necessarily a new board member, but you are our new president, having been our president-elect. Um, so do you just want to briefly give uh, an introduction to yourself. Yes, so thank you, Anita, for the nice presentation before and the introduction to the uh, society. So yes, um, I'm a researcher. I'm working in Belgium, um, involved in uh, planetary missions. So basically looking at the atmosphere of Mars and Venus, uh, Jupiter. And so I've been involved in the Europlanet Society since quite a long time through the project first. And then I happened to be in Berlin when the society was funded. So I, I thought it was logical for me to, uh, to engage. Um, I'm a strong believer of Europe and the European Union. So yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so we also have a new vice president. Um, our other vice president, Angelo Pierossi, is busy doing the winter school at the moment, but we have a new vice president in the shape of uh, Stavro Ivanovsky. Stavro. Hi. Hi, Anita. Hi, everyone. Yes. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. And actually, it's great that uh, we are participating, participating in this webinar, and I want to thank all the attendees, all the participants in this uh, webinar, uh, that they are really attending and they want to share the ideas. They can uh, have their room for ask questions and a um, few words about me. So actually, I'm also like Ankarina. I I'm involved in Europlanet for uh, for a long time. Actually, I was involved uh, within the. Um, uh, Europlanet project, uh, and I started to work for Vespa, and I see actually one of the leaders of Vespa, Stefan Erat, who is uh, uh, online. Uh, who I am, actually, I'm a researcher of uh, ENAF uh, from National Institute of Astrophysics in Italy. Um, I, ha I uh, have a position in Astronomical Observatory of Trieste, and I'm adjunct professor at the University of Trieste. So my uh, main my research is focused on the small bodies and modeling of dust dynamics in and uh, in different uh, astrophysical contexts, uh, like in protoplanetary disk, uh, cometary environment, impact on asteroids. So, uh, and the other research, uh, main main research is uh, studying the planetary magnetospheres in the solar system. I'm involved in various uh, projects uh, and there's planetary space missions, part of the European Space Agency, part of the the NASA and also the, the JAXA. So the like uh, Liche Cube, Rosetta, Baby Colombo, Comet Interceptor here, Ariel. So uh, you can actually go to see my manifesto for the, uh, for the um, which uh, you can find it on the website. But what I want to point out now, like a presentation uh, of me, I just uh, actually am very, very thankful of being first nominated and after it elected, then I got all the support of all the members. First of the, committee and the Europlanet uh, and after it of all the all the people that uh, that voted for me uh, because actually during the years I followed many many positions in uh, Europlanet so I started from the first meeting, meeting I remember in Nantes when I was only a student actually a postdoc that uh, was presenting a talk after they started to propose session after it, from the session I proposed to to participate in the outreach. After that, I proposed to I made my application for the scientific organizing committee that I was selected like a SOC co-chair. That I'm still active like a SOC co-chair. And why I end up actually with knowing all the all the structure of the Europe Planet, I, I finish with the, um, or maybe I'm starting now with the vice presidency of this 
um, of the of the new board and actually i'm very thankful for this and i hope it will be very useful and i'll serve the the community in the best way brilliant thank you so much stavro Right, we also have two new secretaries, so I'm very grateful to be able to hand over the role of secretary um, after the, the last four years to two very, very capable people. Um, so, Edita, uh, would you like to introduce yourself first? So, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you, Aneta, for this uh, opportunity and role that you uh, suggested uh, for me and Federica. So I'm Edita Stonkute from Vilnius University, Lithuania. I'm a senior researcher working in uh, astrospectroscopy of stars, and I'm particularly interested in stars with exoplanets. So for me, it is very interesting to know planetary community and uh, every one of you. So I hope uh, my role here in Europlanet Society will be talking with um, uh, different uh, Europlanet hubs uh, to bring uh, the needs from from hubs to the to the board. So I'm happy to participate uh, in, in, and be useful for the society. Brilliant, thank you so much. And Federica, you were also somebody. Oh well, you're also our new secretary, but also somebody that's come to the planetary science community from a more astrophysics-y aspect. Yeah. Uh, so, Anita, it won't be easy being you, <laughs> even with two of us, but, I mean, uh, we will try to to be to be um, competent in this role. So I'm very happy about this role. Um, actually, I, I now I work in Rome, in one of the Rome offices of the National Institute of Astrophysics, uh, as outreach and educational officer. But uh, as you as you were saying, I came from the uh, black hole astrophysics, so a bit different. Um, then I joined the the planetary science community. Um, I'm in Europlanet. Uh, I started in Europlanet four years ago. So it's a bit of time. Um, and since then, I mean, I, um, I have grown a lot and I, I watched this wonderful group grow. So it's, uh, it's really nice. And then two years ago, I became chair of the, the outreach working group, which I'm very proud of because it's one of the extremely uh, active and uh, full of ideas. So it's a very, very nice uh, group. And now, I mean, this new role uh, as secretary, uh, to which I I hope I will uh, devote a lot of effort. So I'm very happy and very thankful. Superb, thank you very much, Federica. Um, Lee, um, in in just doing a bit of research for this, so I've, we we found that we almost lost you to the navy. That's that's a surprising thing for me. Uh, maybe we can talk about that later, <laughs> Anita. Um, so Anita and I, I think you and I met way back in 2004, 2005, when you were leading something called UK Goes to the Planets at, uh, at that time. So when um, the Europlanet Society was um, going through a, its previous iteration back in 2018, 2019, Anita um, strong armed me into volunteering to come and join you as a society uh, board member. And so as a board member for the previous four years, I got to have a great insight into the European planetary science community, the challenges that were being faced by uh, by Anita and by Nigel and the whole team leading Europlanet Society forward. And uh, I genuinely enjoyed being involved in that in that activity. And particularly, I think that the, the EPSC, the flagship conference that we have for the European community, is such a valuable thing for our community, bringing us together in a way that none of the US meetings or the Asian meetings can ever really accomplished. And I think that's just something that we have to maintain for, for many, many years to come. So when the opportunity came to stand again for the, the new round of board members for 2023, I decided to, to stick with it and carry on and hopefully uh, share and uh, maintain some of that knowledge that I built up over the first four years or so. Uh, just a little bit about me. So I'm a professor of planetary science here at the University of Leicester. If you don't know where Leicester is, think of a map of the United Kingdom and it's right in the centre, as far away from the sea as you can possibly get uh, in the UK. Uh, I've been here for eight years, but before that I was dotting around between the University of Oxford and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory out over in, uh, in California. 
And my area of research is studying the giant planets of our solar system, particularly their, their atmospheres, their storms, their origins, and how they interact with the external space environment. And I've been really lucky. I've been involved with the Cassini mission to Saturn. Uh, I'm currently a participating scientist on the Juno mission to Jupiter. I'm an interdisciplinary scientist for the JUICE mission, which is going to be fabulous over the next uh, few years when it gets to Jupiter in 2030. And I'm also taking the lead with giant planet observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, which is taking up most of my research time at the moment. Now, I'm a passionate believer that uh, the European community has a, a really important role to play in planetary exploration. So uh, that's why I've decided to help out with Europlanet Society for the years to come. So that's me, Anita. And yes, I almost, almost decided to do a completely different course and sail the high seas with the Royal Navy instead. <laughs> wow. We also hope to strong arm you into doing a webinar about JWST um, a little bit further on in the year. So Sorry, to, Anita, you, you were breaking up there. I didn't catch all those requests. I'm joking. <laughs> yes, of course. I'll be able to do that at some point. Excellent. Good. Um, Melissa, um, our early careers representative on the board. Yes. Hello, everyone, and thank you for so much for this opportunity. I am really looking forward to collaborate with all of you. And uh, yeah, so uh, currently I am a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Padova in Italy, uh, where I am studying the interaction between volcanism and tectonic on the surface of Mercury in support of the incoming ESA mission Bepi Colombo. Previously, I was a PhD student at the Open University in the United Kingdom, and I was studying um, a candidate fluvial deposit on Mars, uh, which I always been passionate about. Um, and yeah, so I started to be involved in um, different international projects, and uh, then I learn about Europlanet thanks to my participation at the, I think it was the third uh, EPEC annual week, uh, which was held in Lisbon in Portugal. And uh, I uh, get involved with the um, early career network by um, candidate myself as a co-chair of the EPEC communications working group. And then um, and right now I'm actually not only uh, part of the uh, board, but I am also the co-chair of the Early Career Network. So I hope that I uh, can represent early careers and, and be a good link between the Europlanet board members and the early careers, uh, which is, I mean, my role. So let's see. Thank you, Melissa, and I hope we'll we'll come back in a bit to to talk a bit about EPEC and how that's yeah. going, the restructuring and all the activity sure. going on now. Um, and Luca, finally, um, you've had a different career path and uh, looking at the boundaries between academia and industry as well. So uh, could you tell everybody about yourself? Yes, uh, indeed, actually, uh, I almost went to do something totally different, you know, because I applied two postdocs and one was in Oxford to do planetary science and the other one was uh, in Australia to do uh, chaos in neural systems and Oxford came first. So I went to Oxford and I did planetary science. So here we are. Um, so uh, my memories of uh, Europlanet uh, starts when uh, Europlanet was still a European planetological network, planetology network uh, back in, I think it was 2005 or something like that. So I went to uh, meeting in London and uh, and there were discussions about a possible future uh, virtual uh, research infrastructure. So many years afterwards, you know, we have uh, this research infra infrastructure in place and I'm very proud of uh, being uh, on the board. Uh, so I attended many PSC conferences, but the, the real uh, turning point was last year, uh, in Bratislava when I, I met you all guys for uh, one week and we discussed the future of your planet. So I, I decided to, uh, uh, to join uh, uh, the ship and you know, try to, to bring my experience into, into what the Europlanet Society is going to be in the future. So my experience is 
both academic and uh, uh, industrial, uh, let's say. Uh, I've been in academia for more than, I think more than 10, 10 years. And then I did uh, kind of uh, in between uh, for a few years. And now I'm, I almost, I can almost say that I'm fully uh, on the on the company side. So I created a company in uh, Southeast France, uh, which I, I, um, well, I, I, I use to, to do still research because I collaborate a lot with uh, many uh, um, institutions in Europe and, and outside Europe. So I'm part of some missions like the Emirates Mars mission. So I, it's possible to do research while uh, at the same time being in a company. And of course, you know, because of my experience, what I would like to bring uh, to, to the to the European society is, uh, you know, kind of uh, linking uh, academia and industry together, looking at uh, policy as well, because, you know, without policy, there are many things that cannot be done. Uh, and, uh, you know, with all these, I, I'm really looking forward to the next few years uh, working together to make uh, the European community even stronger. And I would like to hear from the community what they think about future of your planet. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So this is supposed to be an interactive session. This is an opportunity for you to anybody on this call to raise questions, um, to ask questions of any of the board members or to raise points that you think are um, are important to to discuss um, or for the new board to be thinking about. So if you have questions, um, put your hand up um, or drop them into the chat and we'll keep an eye out for those and um, hopefully be able to answer lots of those um, over the next sort of half an hour. Um, as we don't have any questions yet, uh, maybe we can go back to um, Melissa. Um, early careers are a huge part of the Europlanet Society. I think about, I think over 50% of our membership are early careers and obviously supporting early careers is a really um, important objective for, for the Europlanet community. Um, can you tell us what's going on with EPEC at the moment and um, and how you see that developing over the next few months? Yes, so um, we um, we we faced a big change um, because uh, many of the people who were volunteering in the past two or three years had uh, other commitments. So many people left the working groups. So um, after the um, annual week. And uh, anyway, EPSC, we have found other um, other people who has uh, who contributed a lot to organize anyway the events at the uh, past EPSC. And so we are starting from there because the, all the people are brand new. Uh, and also we uh, have faced a change in the um, in the committee and. Uh, um, there, there were new elections also for the co-chairs, so everything is new, uh, and people are trying to figure it out how they can help, how, what they can do. I mean, I am receiving um, emails where people are interested to work uh, actively as volunteers, but they don't know exactly uh, what to do or who they would contact. So what I uh, what I did was to uh, um, uh, write a manual uh, where, um, and I'm still writing it with the support of the current uh, committee, uh, where uh, the new incoming members can find all the information they need about EPEC, like a brief history, um, and who are the people who are currently involved, who could be the point of contact in Europlanet if they need, for example, to be trained to modify the website or if they need maybe some information about session at EPC and so on. So I'm literally writing a manual with them um, also about the activities, how they can handle them, literally doing bullet points and that also people who have never been involved before in EPEC can have a clear idea about uh, what is uh, the activity about and what they should do. So in this way, they can decide what is more interesting for them and they can understand better 
um, how to how to help and support based also on their personal commitment because anyway uh, many of them are doing their PhD or postdocs and and so on so after um, we finish this manual we want to open some uh, codes um that we will share anyway in uh, discord possibly also on the previous slack channel because many people are still following slack and not everybody i think have joined discord and in this way we can ask them uh, contacts and if there are volunteers who want to join what they can do and and so on so we are moving forward even though we are um, a bit slow in in that but um, so what we uh, did with the structure, so previously IPAC was organized as Europlanet, like uh, there were working groups like communication, uh, outreach, and uh, um, new frontiers, and so on. But what we noticed was that um, each working group had some co-chairs. And sometimes there were uh, no many volunteers to support the co-chairs in the activities of the working group. So we are trying to see if maybe changing this structure, we can uh, avoid that some people are overloaded with the um, uh, with, with work to do. And uh, what we were thinking was to divide um, EPEC in two main working groups, or simply two main groups. One group was dedicated to the events of EPEC, which are mainly the annual week and the uh, sessions and workshops that usually uh, EPEC organized during EPSC. So in this way, there is a working group dedicated to do to these two um, uh, events. And then another working group uh, which are going to take care of all the activities together. And we will not have co-chairs of the working groups, but each activity, like uh, the, um, the podcast, the video contest, and uh, the inspiring story of the month, will have at least two uh, co-chairs or at least one responsible person. So, and then other volunteers that will support at the same level those people to do all the activities. In this way, there is not just one person uh, who is leading a group, but there is a community and uh, um, more people who will um, support the, all the activities at the same time. So this is, this is the idea. I cannot guarantee that this is going to work better, but we thought that it was worth a try and see if maybe we can uh, um, avoid some of the, not mistakes, but let's say some of the problems that we have faced in the last couple of years. So let's see if this is going to, to work better. And if not, we will, uh, came out, we will come out with some new ideas. That's Thank thing. you, Melissa. That sounds that sounds great. I mean, I I think we all know how challenging it is to run any kind of voluntary organisation. It's not just Europlanet that's that's struggled a bit with this over the past couple of years, but um, keeping that momentum up and organising things so that there's that clear handover is 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 one of the things I think this board will really face um, in in you know having set up the society and almost gone straight into COVID. Um, it's one of those one of the one of the real challenges I think for the for the Europlanet Society and something that needs addressing. Um, Edita, I'm going to jump to you. Um, one of the things that uh, you mentioned in in your manifesto um, and in your comments is that you know you're you're very passionate about inclusion and diversity and widening participation, and you've been working with the mentoring project. Um, what kind of things would you like to see within the Europlanet Society developing to to support the community in that respect? Yeah. So. Uh, we as a society should first of all probably decide if we want uh, still continue having uh, such uh, such opportunities as a mentoring scheme in in the society and uh, we should think what kind of tools we should uh, um, um, create to attract uh, more uh, more people to the society and uh, first of all we need to know what are the need what our needs are right so do we need those tools and 
do we need uh, those tools uh, not only for for your younger generation but also for for mentors right because uh, just by our voluntary work uh, those tools can work so it means that we have to agree between ourselves to dedicate some time to help uh, younger younger colleagues in the society so it's uh, a lot of uh, voluntary work uh, from our side and we should expect that we need to do this work and, and not expect that someone else will do probably yes yes indeed um it's 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 definitely a challenge um i think you know what one of the things that's made it difficult in in terms of keeping the voluntary activity going was um not having a in person epsc um for a few years um and then this last year we've we've had the, the the joint meeting um with the dps in the state so again we had the research infrastructure meeting the erim in in june in bratislava but that was a slightly different kind of event um i've seen some some comments in the chat um about EPSC um, and actually just generally uh, Lee I just wanted to pick up on the, the the comments that you made about the value of EPSC and kind of bringing the community together and whether you could expand a bit more on that yeah sorry I was on on mute there so I've always loved going to these the, the EPSC meetings particularly the ones in Europe where we're bouncing around between fantastic European capitals and I have to say that I'm not sure if any of the organisers are on this particular call, but the Granada meeting that we had back in uh, 2022 was, I think, one of my most favourite meetings of all time, actually. Just the venue was superb. Um, but I did find it rather challenging, um, this the, the US trip last year. So the joint meeting between uh, DPS and EPSC made it rather expensive for many of our European colleagues to make the journey over to, to the US. It was quite noticeable even being there that, that we were a very small subset of the community when we went out uh, to San Antonio. Now, of course, the, the collaboration with our uh, American counterparts is, is really important and we want to keep that going in any way that we can. But I also see EPSC as the, the, key, the key meeting that European scientists, whether they've got much research funding or not, to really make their research uh, available to the wider community. So personally, I would have a preference for keeping an annual EPSC meeting in Europe somewhere, rather than having years where we, we decamp over to, to the US. I recognize there are problems there though, which is why I raised the question, because I'd like to hear other people's thoughts. Of course, our biggest ever EPSC meetings have been the ones that have been joint with DPS. So our biggest income has come from those large shared events. I'm thinking of the Nantes meeting in, in particular. Um, so there's pros and cons either way. So I'd be interested to see what other people and particularly the Europlanet Society members on today think about that joint EPSC DPS meetings. Maybe there are other organizations we should be partnering with uh, rather than the DPS. Would anybody like to jump in there um, from the from the community um, and add add to that? Um, otherwise, maybe Stavro, um, do you want to just comment um, on EPSC and also looking ahead to the joint? We we have another joint meeting coming up in twenty twenty five in in Helsinki. Um, how how what's what's the thinking um from from the soccer at the moment as to how that's going to work thank you anita yeah actually i'll uh, continue with what actually lee started to say about tpsc and i'll comment on uh, the scientific uh, content of this meeting yes definitely this is a meeting of a key importance uh because it's uh it's really uh, the meeting it's the meeting <laughs> of the planetologist in in europe and it's very much uh, visited attended by by scientists all over the world. Uh, it's um, relatively, uh, the, the history of this meeting, we know that uh, gather the, the, the scientists from Europe, uh, there are a lot of, a lot of initiatives within EPSC and European society to involve uh, people from underrepresented countries, to involve people all over the world. 
there are a lot of initiatives that together also we spread out on the different continents, actually, that people that uh, once they get uh, opportunity to study um, and to work in Europe, they attend this meeting. Uh, from the scientific point of view, uh, EPSC uh, uh, actually developed a lot. It's not only a, the conference of the planetologists. As I always say, this is more like a platform for sharing ideas, making collaborations. Most of the most of the ingredients of our nice meeting we have it in EPSC. Of course, uh, how this is achieved, there there could be a, a lot of. Uh, we can talk a lot about this. But I think mainly there I can summarize in three words in my perspective. One thing is definitely the tradition. So definitely we keep, uh, we have continuity. We have the tradition to keep the, the top scientists for the keynotes. We have a tradition to keep high level sessions for the, for the mission. Uh, we uh, practically, if we have something uh, breaking through like a scientific results, we have it in APSC. Uh, we take uh, care of all the different communities. We introduced la lastly, actually, and the last meeting in Granada, the, the standalone meeting, not with the, uh, the, joint, uh, the joint meeting, but in Granada, we in included also astrobiology, like one part of the scientific arguments. Uh, so EPSC shaped uh, uh, the scientific content in all the fields in the planetary science. And this is uh, really amazing for the, for the course of years that we had. Uh, what we get uh, recently, we got um, uh, specific missions that are um, practically including not only scientific topics, but also technology, which is very important. Talking with the, with the agency is something that was kept uh, uh, from the previous meetings and we, we are keep going. We uh, practically now uh, in, the last, uh, in the last meetings and even in the joint meeting, we, saw, we see this. Practically, we have uh, keynote talks in the main fields. We have collaborations that are initiated within the uh, Europlanet Society in EPSC. And what is the amazing, amazing part, and which, which uh, what is I really appreciate very much, and it's great that I need to start with this, it's EPAC. Because actually, the future of this society, uh, it's not, uh, maybe most of you know that this society, the two columns of this society, uh, um, are practically the EPSC, like a flagship uh, um, conference, and also the projects that uh, with our management and with the European Society people that for many years uh, uh, have been involved in the in the European Society with the, like Ninja, Anita, and all the people that they left the board practically. Uh, the, they were successful calls for the, for the projects, and they were the two columns, the projects and the uh, the um, uh, this conference what is great is that this interaction of what the community needs and we see it with the feedbacks and with the discussion uh, that uh, we have at the epsc this can shape also what the euro planet society should do and can work in in these fields in order to to get what we want from the from the from the community so this uh, really collaboration between uh, uh, let's say the core event of the EPSC, of the European Society, which is EPSC, to shape a society, planetary society, society within Europe. It's really, uh, it's really great. And uh, I want to finish only with one, one uh, main point for the, for the EPSC again. There are many young people that they say we met. Uh, okay, we presented our work. We had visibility. We uh, learn from the senior researchers how we can, how, how well, what is the best practice to, to, to present our results and to, to share the ideas. But what is uh, the interesting meaning, especially in the DPS, the last joint meeting, what we found is even if we are, um, uh, let's say, usually EPSC get about 1,000 uh, participants, this is a growing society because we not only involve people that are interested in different fields, but we live in a world that multidisciplinary approach and especially the technology uh, is very much uh, challenging in our words, in, in our in our times. And this is what EPC actually is trying to, to do. And uh, I think you enjoy these meetings in the future. Now we have it in Berlin, after that we have it in Helsinki. We keep going with the meetings in uh, uh, joint meetings uh, 
with uh, DPS and maybe with other uh, also uh, very good uh, plantology, uh, plantology, sorry, plantology uh, conferences in the world. Thank you, Stavro. Um, Nigel, you wanted to make a quick comment um, about EPSC. Um, we've got sort of 10 minutes left. And yeah, just very quickly about the point about uh, having uh, joint international meetings. Um, I think uh, Lee asked us some very good points, I think, last year. It's not just last year. I think the Pasadena meeting also showed some, some problems of the joint meetings in America not really working because of the cost. Um, it has also been proposed that, that you know, that if we're going to do joint meetings, we don't just have to be American centric, that the suggestion of having one out in the Far East with our joint with people out there might also be opportune. Um, whether that is a separate meeting or merged meeting, I think is something uh, we have to discuss because as pointed out, the finances of the society are so dependent upon uh, that conference at the moment that having skipping a year uh, and not getting income is a problem. But I, I, I think, we should think if we are thinking about doing joint meetings with other places, we shouldn't just think of the Americans anymore. There are strong other communities that we may want to work with. Thank you, Nigel. Um, I just want to move to talk a little bit about the hubs and the other committees because we haven't really touched on those as yet. Um, Luca, this is something that you mentioned um, in in your manifesto um, and the importance of the hubs and creating those reactions between between those. Um, we've also got some other people from committees and hubs, and maybe they'll also like to con uh, comment in a in a couple of minutes. But but I'll go to you first, Luca. Yeah, very briefly. So at Arim, uh, I, I learned a bit about hubs and how they work and how they don't work. Some of them don't work. So I think the hubs are, are a very important structure because it, it's, it's like, you know, the European community, you know, the, they're like a national states, but then they are like a overall uh, um, governance. So we, we are in the executive uh, committee, executive office, but um, in order to have a, a, a good touch of, uh, community's feeling we need a uh, we need a hubs i guess uh, so that there is a two way interaction so we communicate to the community and the community communicates to us and the hubs for me are, are a very important uh, uh, intermediate um i think we should make them work uh well for those hubs that work well that's that's great uh, but for those hubs that do not work well we should understand why they don't, don't work they don't work well and maybe trying to to find a, a some kind of real um, um, reasons for for hubs to be and uh, trying to uh, make uh, people who are involved into hubs uh, aware of what they want what they need to do and and uh, you know, Trying to understand what they want to do as well, so that we can uh, we can help them and uh, we can direct them as well if needed. Thank you, Luca. Um, we have a few few people who are involved in hubs um, on the call today. Um, we've just just lost Severine, which is unfortunate. But um, I don't know whether anybody would like to make a comment. Um, if you would like to, then you're you're very very welcome. Um, the other very important committee as well, which we haven't touched on, um, is the diversity committee. Um, and again, Ariana, I don't know whether you would be willing just to say a couple of words about that and maybe what you would hope to see from the board um, about the diversity committee and interactions there. Uh, yes, well, from our side, we have with uh, the diversity committee, we have, uh, for those who don't know, so uh, there is an officer for, from each hub, uh, which is part of the diversity committee. Actually, we are still missing uh, some some officers so from some hubs, so this is kind of call for the future if you're interested. Just have a look at the web page and the activities that we are doing. Um, what so usually we are very busy during uh, the EPSC time with uh, organizing the guidelines for the EPSC, and uh, we try during the year to also to keep active and to have uh, regular meetings to organize other activities. That uh, I think we should start to. Also, to again, I, I was, I'm always thinking we should start with the, with the wiki editathon, which was one of the activities. 
so yeah, I'm thinking how to to relaunch it. Uh, whether so, yeah, I think uh, Anita was thinking at the uh, papers we should be writing about uh, the recipe and outreach. But um, so yeah, we we try to um, keep uh, in contact with the board and the apps. So this is more or less. Thank you, thank you. I think um, yes, it would be great to see the wiki editathon get back into get back into motion and hopefully we can bring that across to discord as well and get that that community embedded within there um and that's also something to raise at the lock meeting that we have tomorrow um in berlin um federica outreach um we haven't yet talked about outreach and that again yeah. is the part where europlanet has been quite successful and, and vibrant sure so as i said before um in the the outreach uh, working group is very active uh we do oodles of activities i'm very happy about that um i mean contests prizes fundings uh, educational resources uh, workshops uh, one thing i would like to to do and to have for uh, the next years is to uh, succeed in better disseminating all uh, the things we, we are doing um, because we we need to allow people to take advantage of all uh, these things so Yes, this is one of my main objectives for uh, the Outreach Working Group. Superb. Um, right, we have four minutes left on the call. So I think I'm going to go back to you, Anne Karine, as the president, um, to just wrap us up with where we are with the association, with the, the, the new structure for, for Europlanet, um, and anything else that you'd like to say um, with regards to what the new board's going to be doing over the next few next few months to years? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Anita. Yes, I, I think this uh, new executive board will have a lot of work to do. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but um, I'm sure we will do our best um, because this is a, a very crucial year, maybe years, um, in the sense that. We really uh, need to become independent, uh, financially independent. So the society should have it, its own funding, um, be involved in projects uh, to, to compensate for the years where we might not have income because of the DPS, PSC uh, issue. Or, or not, or just to have more funds to re-inject in the community. So that's the active that the, the idea, of course, is not to get to, to get just funding for 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 nothing. Um, so one way to do that is, uh, as I said, to be part of projects. And up to now, as a society was not legally recognized, we couldn't. And that's why we. Uh, we started the process to be recognized as an IESBL, which we are now. So now we have the possibility to further engage and to be really partners in future projects. And I think that's very important because we as a society members and executive board, we should really define which kind of project we want to be partnering in um where we want to do what where we want to go and what exactly we want to do which activities are should be our priorities and there i'm 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 yeah it's not sure uh, it, it must come from the uh, from the the society themselves and from the members what kind of activities you want us to be involved in and to support you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Anne Karine. Um, and actually, just just while we have one minute left, Nigel, do you just want to say something briefly about we're coming to the end of the research infrastructure project? Um, yeah. What are the What are the main outcomes of that? What are What are the Well, we're doing a very. Well, Anita's we just written a very comprehensive review of some of the outcomes of the sustainability of the research infrastructure. I think I'll just say that I think Anita kind of hit the nail on the head last year when she said that 
But regardless of what, how it is funded and the European funding, we have created this research infrastructure, uh, both uh, physical in terms of laboratories we can access and the virtual. And that now exists. And that is a very important part of what has been developed. And we have to maintain that. How we're going to do it and, and the various arrangements are very much the thing we need to work on in the next six months, the last few months of the project. We will be applying for, for new projects, as Anita has said, and we really need to get on with that. That's now very much a priority for the next few weeks. But uh, this idea of finding ways that we can access, and indeed people have already said that one of the things it would like to see from the society is this idea of maintaining in some way a TA type program. Um, we have to just find ways of doing it. But I think the point is that the research infrastructure which we have built up exists. And uh, we need to now enshrine that in the future, like the future of the society. Uh, and, and and state clearly that we've got that research infrastructure. And that means the partners need, need to also sort of find ways of committing and working with the society to maintain that. Right. Well, thank you very, very much, um, everybody. I just wanted to, I should have said at the beginning, but I just wanted to also remind you that we do have some other board members who are not here today um, because we couldn't find a time when absolutely everybody could make it. But if you want to know more about our other board members, so uh, Julia de Leon, um, Livia Giacomini, um, Didier Moreau, our treasurer, and Angelo Pio Rossi, our vice president, then please do look on the website. There's uh, their manifestos, which kind of give you a bit of background and their vision for what they want to do with, with the society. So they are also important parts of the society. We hope that they'll be able to join us for another of these discussion sessions um, in the not too distant future. But thank you everybody for coming today, for, for joining us today. Thank you so much to the new board members for stepping up and agreeing to help take Euro Planet forward in these hopefully very exciting times. And thank you to all of you uh, participants that joined us and for continuing to be members of the Euro Planet Society. Um, yes, we hope we will go on to grow it into something really exciting and strong in the future. So join us next month uh, to find out about uh, asteroids and Bennu and the following month to find out about careers in the space sector and have a great rest of your day.